Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So today I wanted to go over and do another video on, well, a series that I haven't updated in a year. And that is my 2015 GMC Sierra 1500 and its vibration issues. If you haven't watched those videos, I mean, it's, it's a year old, so there's a good chance that uh, my newer subscribers maybe didn't see them, but ultimately this truck and a whole lot more of them I've been following for quite a long time suffer from some pretty serious vibration issues. There's a forum that I've followed pretty closely on this. I think last time I checked it was like 13,000 posts. I'll update that figure here. But a lot of people are dealing with this vibration issue. I contacted a company called Performance Drivelines. They are in Bakersfield, California. I noticed they've been mentioned a whole lot in forums relative to this Chevy Shake is what people are calling it. And people are saying that by changing the drive shaft and the rear end, sometimes it's just the drive shaft, sometimes it's the drive shaft and the rear axles, that it's solving their vibration issues. For the most part, you get these trucks up to in the 70 mile an hour range, some are lower, some are higher, and they start to vibrate really bad. And my truck is 74 miles an hour, pretty much like clockwork that this happens. GM cut me a check to basically just keep the truck. They couldn't find out what the problem was, and that was pretty much where it had ended. Well, since then, I bought my Harley Davidson, and I ride that quite a bit, and the truck really hadn't moved all that much uh, other than inclement weather and stuff like that. So I started seeing a lot of other people commenting that this drive shaft update kind of fixes things, and I thought, I'm going to reach out and see what this is kind of all about. We've been talking for a while. So what happened was the week before uh, President's Day, they had contacted me and said, hey, do you want to bring your truck out here to Bakersfield? Because they've really done a lot of work on two-wheel drive trucks. Down in the Southwest, not a whole lot of people buying four-wheel drive trucks, especially when it comes to performance drive lines. What they get a lot of is people slamming their trucks. So not a lot of people slamming four-wheel drive trucks because uh, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, that's starting to kind of change a little bit because now another trend that's developing is slamming your four-wheel drive truck, supercharging it, and then what you get is basically all-wheel drive is what people are calling it, and you can launch the snot out of these things. Oh my God! Oh my God! Holy shit! And not have any tire slip, and it, it kind of creates a whole nother performance benefit to these four wheel drive trucks. So what they said to me was, would you be interested in bringing your truck out? And I said, sure. I know a ton of people are following this, so it makes sense with a YouTube channel to give it a shot. Now I'm not interested in slamming and lowering my truck and all that stuff, not really something I would do. But what I personally think is that out of all the forums that I'm reading, most of the people that are looking to fix this vibration in their truck are just daily driving it. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna shoot out to Bakersfield that's six hours away, which was really a tough decision because just two weeks prior to that, I had driven all the way from Scottsdale up to Sacramento to pick up my auction Crown Vic that I bought and tow it all the way back. That was like 40 hours of basically living in my truck to do that trip. So was I really into a road trip two weeks later? Not really, but there's enough people interested in this and this vibration's driven me nuts for years and I know it's driving other people nuts. So I thought I'll bite the bullet, shoot out there and see what we can come up with. So again, they have done this with two wheel drive trucks and it solved the problem. They don't have or didn't have four wheel drive trucks to be able to pull the measurements and all that stuff and really confirm whether it would work with the four wheel drive. So I thought I would be the guinea pig and I went up there, they had a mock-up of the two-piece that they've been putting on the rear-wheel drive trucks. We gave it a shot, needs a little bit of tweaking, but what I will do, I'll just walk you through the installation of the two-piece drive shaft. This is on the four-wheel drive truck. This was just kind of a mock-up, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be about the same thing you do for the two-wheel drive truck, which they are selling these for the two-wheel drive versions of these trucks. So I'll walk you through it here. So it's literally just four bolts. You pull off that U-joint, it pops out of that pinion yoke, and then the slip yoke just pulls right out. It's really that simple. You see sliding the new two-piece in, 
just slides right back in. This is where you get into the mock-up of the actual cross member support. This is going to be the bracing for that carrier bearing. And that is the midpoint for the uh, new two-piece drive shaft where that carrier bearing will sit. Now, as you can see on my truck, I have this exhaust bracket, which I was told is uncommon. So if you have this, you may need to do a little bit of cutting and grinding to get this surface back to smooth on your frame. But again, this is only for an exhaust hanger. So it's not really a crucial component to worry about getting removed off that frame. You just want to clean that area up and make room for your new bracket. Now you're going to want to measure this. Every truck is going to be different, so follow the instructions that come with the kit. You can see the measurement is pulled from that cross member support right in front of it. That is how you'll want to make that measurement. And once you do that, the next step is going to be to drill the frame. And these do go straight through the actual frame rail, so you're going to drill through both sides, and then it's going to through bolt into that new bracket. You'll just bolt it all down. Don't tighten everything down right away. You'll just want to mock it up, get everything set in there, make sure that it's where it needs to be, and then snug everything down once it's all in place. But as you can see here, really simple. I mean, this really is something you can do in your driveway. You don't need a lift. You don't need all these tools to do it. They are nice and it does speed the job up quite a bit, but this is definitely a, a job that you can do in your driveway. It really is a job that can be done with one person. It is nice to have somebody else for another set of hands, but really, as you can see, it's just a matter of drilling that frame, getting these cross member supports mounted and, and making sure that everything's where it needs to be, snug it all down. And as you can see, that really is the most complicated part. The next step is just take that rear portion of that two piece drive shaft. You just slide that on. And once that's all fit and everything's all mocked up and aligned where it needs to be, you can tighten down those two bolts for the carrier bearing. You just want to make sure the drive shaft looks like it's shooting straight down the middle of the truck. And then you tighten down these four bolts to that pinion yoke. And that really is as complicated as this job is. It's way easier than I ever would have thought it would have been. I've never done anything like this before, so I was a little bit concerned about how much this project really would entail. And as you can see, it's really not that bad. So... That is the installation of the Performance Drivelines two-piece drive shaft kit. Now we took this out on the road and it wasn't really working as what we expected it to. So they had another drive shaft ready to go, which was basically just a replacement of the OEM one-piece aluminum drive shaft that's already on these trucks. Now when you look at the OEM drive shaft on these trucks, it's necked down, it's a thinner walled aluminum, like you tap on it and the thing sounds like it's paper thin. Uh, and what they have is just a more sturdy, robust, one-piece drive shaft, and it doesn't neck down. So we decided to throw that on and give it a shot. Now, as you can see, this one-piece aluminum drive shaft is way easier to install because there is no carrier bearing. So it just slides in that slip yoke, and then you reattach that U-joint to the pinion yoke, and it's really that simple. Now, the two-piece is the better option as far as trying to eliminate vibration goes, but this also did the trick. This is actually the drive shaft that is still on my truck today, so it actually is performing fairly well. Real easy to install, real beefy setup, and that's that. So when we took that up on the highway, still some vibration. That didn't really feel a whole lot of difference. So we decided to go one step further and they swapped out the rear axles. Now, swapping out these rear axles, is it's a little bit more involved. If you're gonna be doing something like that in your driveway, I recommend you have a buddy who maybe knows more about doing something like that if you don't, uh, or a shop or somebody like that do it. Now you could probably stumble through it yourself, but you're taking a drive shaft, which is a couple hours on a Saturday, and turning it into probably a weekend project. So just be ready for that. So once we replaced those axles, I got it up on the highway and I did notice it felt better. And we kind of left it at that and said, well, let's just kind of drive that out and see how it goes. So it's been a few weeks now of driving this truck, and I certainly noticed that it is much smoother. The vibration does still come up. I'm not going to say it doesn't. But what I will say is that the wife test is the most valuable test that I could run in this situation. Before we replaced the drive shaft and the axles, my wife hated driving this truck. It just, it was uncomfortable. The bottom line at highway speeds was uncomfortable. Now that we've had it for a few weeks, she's telling me that she thinks any vibration she feels is just normal, what you would call truck vibration. So I personally still think the truck has a vibration in that 74 mile an hour range, but I can say that it's less. That frequency range of where it works itself up has narrowed and it seems more controllable in my opinion. So do I recommend that you try this if you have the Chevy Shake? It's complicated because 
I would say buy this if you're willing to be at the end of the day, settle for the fact that you upgraded your current setup. You're getting a more heavy duty, robust rear axle setup and the drive shaft is 100% more of a durable stout drive shaft it may fix your vibration. So what I wanna say, and it's very important that you guys watching this video understand this, you are not buying a Chevy Shake vibration fix solution, but it might fix your Chevy Shake. And you read through the forums, you'll see guys saying they bought this setup or bought the two-piece drive shaft and it solved their problems. I'm telling you that with my truck, the vibration's still there a little bit. It's way less than what it was. So. It really is just another dart that you're throwing trying to fix this problem. I went through all of the diagnostics that the shops did. They replaced tires, they replaced a, a, a rim that was out of round. They checked, I mean, it just went through everything. Nothing solved the problem. Some people on the forums are saying that it's the four cylinder mode and others are saying that the whole rear axle is shot. Others are saying that it's the drive shaft. Some are saying it's the rims and the tires. Nobody knows, and there's been no recall thrown out to really address what the problem is, so really nobody knows, it's just throwing darts. And the best dart that's been thrown so far in my situation has been the drive shaft and the rear axles. So it just kind of goes to show that this situation really doesn't have a whole lot of known solutions. So do not think you're gonna be buying drive shafts and rear axles from Performance Drive Lines, giving it a shot, getting mad at them saying that they sold you something that was gonna fix it because that's not what they're selling and then try to ship it back and get your money back. Don't do it because, well, they're a small shop and they're not set up, they're not Amazon. They're not some huge aftermarket parts supplier that is going to be uh, just churning and burning parts and having a huge return of parts in the same process. I mean, they'll stand by their stuff and warranty it, but they are not guaranteeing it's gonna fix your vibration problem. So know that going into it, very, very important. Uh, but what I can say is that my vibration, again, getting back to that frequency range, it is less. So when I get to that vibration point, I can either back out of the gas, get into the gas, and control it way easier than I ever was able to before. The truck itself just feels smoother from zero to 80. So it did certainly smooth this truck out. I'm very happy with, with that solution. Uh, but, you know, this is a team effort. This is a collaboration that I'm working with here on Performance Drive Lines, trying to see if we can't put our thumb right on what the problem is. They have some other thoughts and some other things they would like to maybe try out, but I just wanted to throw this out there because I know a lot of people were watching my videos about this Chevy Shake, and I feel terrible for anybody who's bought a truck that has this problem. And a lot of you guys are gonna say, why did you not just trade this thing and get rid of it? Part of the problem is I've exposed on my YouTube channel that I know the problem exists in this truck and I'm not trying to put it onto somebody else because I know if I trade this truck in, it's gonna go through the, the process and that process is I trade it in, they shoot it off to auction, some other dealership buys it, throws it on their lot, puts it up for sale, one of you unlucky viewers buys it, finds me on my YouTube channel and thinks I'm a dick. And I don't want that, I, I'd rather find out what the problem is. If I can solve this issue or help be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem, which everybody else who's just gotten rid of these things is just kind of, it's part of the problem. And I believe that these trucks between 14 and I think 18 is the range that they ran, are gonna start running through the used car market now. And that sucks, it sucks. So I'm just trying to provide whatever information I can hunting through the forums, and again, I found this Performance Drive Lines, and I thought, they have a great reputation. I'm gonna give it a shot and see what I can do. And again, guys, Performance Drive Lines is heavily respected in the performance market. Uh, the California car scene is huge. Performance Drive Lines is a big part of that. These trucks, they almost don't even wanna to touch them because, well, if they start selling drive lines to guys, and then guys start posting that, oh, this shop sucks because my truck still vibrates, they're not interested in that because they're not selling a solution to the Chevy Shake. They're just having guys like me say, here's a drive shaft shop. I put it in my truck, did it work? Yes or no, this is what the solution is. Just throwing darts. So guys, that's kind of where I'm at with this. Just trying to provide you guys with information. I do recommend you contact Performance Drive Lines. They are being really kind of timid about this market because, well, it's a ticking time bomb and they don't really totally want to be involved in it. But if it'll fix the problem, guys like me are looking at it saying like, hey, I want that solution. So 
kind of a double-edged sword. Be kind to performance drive lines. They're only trying to help everybody out through this situation. So again, if this is your first time tuning in, please click that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel, and we will see you guys next time.